Good morning, Rich. DP, you doing all right, man? You, you I, good? I think. Have you ever had like a, a sports dream? Yeah, I, I dreamt actually last summer that uh, that uh, Dan Quinn hired me to be an assistant for the Falcons. We saw what happened after that. They made it to the big game. Um, and um, I guess that's the rest of the story I'd like to tell. So that you, happened last year. I don't know what that meant. This is after so. they lost the Super Bowl? No, this was uh, the summer before their season. Oh. So that was two summers ago. Huh. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. could have convinced yeah. them to uh, take a knee and get a field goal and then win the Super Bowl. Yeah, maybe my clock management skills would have come <laughs> in uh, handy, um, you know. But uh, alas, real, real, real life took place, and I was busy that night. And I'm sure your coach was too. But uh, you, I don't know what this means for you. It's it, that, that sounded like one of the worst uh, pharmaceutical commercials I've ever seen. Like you have to consult your doctor to see if Reddick is right for you. Damn, <laughs> uh, I don't know. That could be it right there. <laughs> Careful before taking Reddick. Yeah, if 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 Reddick lasts longer than four hours, consult your <laughs> con, consult Coach K. Um, all right. Speaking of coaches, are we getting yes, we getting into must win situation for J- Jason Garrett? Not, I'm talking about overall picture, Jason Garrett. Do you think that there's any chance Jason Garrett is coaching for his job these next five games? Oh man, I I I can't read Jerry Jones's mind. Uh, it really, honestly, depends if on if I guess Gruden would be interested. I mean. That's the whole thing. I mean, as you know, Jerry likes to make big plays. And would Gruden come out of the Monday night booth to coordinate the uh, you know offense for Dak? Is Dak the kid that he would he would he would uh, you know hitch his wagon to for a decade to come with Zeke and Dallas and get a ton of money and work in this building uh, that I'm standing in right now? By the way, you could hear the hum of the tractors brushing the field of the rubber pellets right now. Oh, nice. Game. Yeah. I was, by the way, how was that for a word picture? Oh, I liked yeah. it. I liked it. What do you think it. about that? Wait, what's well, on, I know. What, I know you're, what's on the Jumbotron right now? Zero. It's freaking me out. It's a huge, dark, black screen right now. It's, it, and I, this, this building is something else, man. I mean, it really is a wonder of the world. <laughs> when you walk in here, you just, your, your senses are just, uh, you don't, don't know where to go. Um, but anyway, tonight tonight is a big one. Obviously, uh, I, I I fear the Cowboys are going to go O for Zeke. I really do. Mm. Their first three games without him, they haven't scored ten points yet. Um, it's the, the the last team to to go four in a row without scoring ten points in a row was the the O uh, three Giants, and I think that that's a possibility again tonight. The Redskins defense is is a very good squad that we've seen play against some top notch teams. I know that they folded in New Orleans a couple of weeks ago, but um, what they did in, in Seattle, what they've done uh, on Monday Night Football, uh, they were the, one of the first teams to expose the Raiders this year. Um, and and I, I really like them tonight a lot. Kirk Cousins likes this building. Six touchdowns, no interceptions, 600 yards combined in his last two starts here. Um, uh, tonight is a rough one for, for Dallas. And then, you know, the next one is at the Giants, and who the heck knows what Giants <laughs> team they're going to look and see there. I mean, that one's a total toss-up, um, you know, before they go uh, to the black hole, uh, and then Zeke comes back. So uh, I, I don't know if he's coaching for his job to answer the question mm-hmm. that you posed because um, I don't can't read Jerry's mind. But the last five games is going to be interesting regardless. Your reaction to what happened with Eli Manning is what? I I stunned. I'm stunned. Uh, I, I know the Giants are going to have to figure out what the Eli Manning end game is at some point. I, I honestly didn't think now would be the time to figure it out. Uh, I uh, that that uh, you know that and that there's an owner uh, in John Mara who is one of the most whip smart guys I've ever met in the 14 plus years that I've I've done this. And knowing him and knowing the traditions of this team, having grown up in the New York City area. You know, I'm I'm flat. I'm really stunned that they would have an organizational meeting for an all-time quarterback like Eli, with two rings, a Walter Payton Man of the Year resume, and a and a streak, a 210 game streak that that can't be trifled with. 
and that they would break that organizational meeting thinking that a, a start, you, Eli, you can start, let's check that box for you, but we don't know how long you're going to start because we do need to see these guys in, in the game, essentially telling Eli Manning and then the rest of the Giants and the fan base that they're going to treat the last five games like a preseason game to try and see what they have in, in, in their other two quarterbacks. And then to, to make this maneuver – uh, and then uses their front man, a guy who has zero credibility in that town right now, um, in Ben McAdoo, and have him bust out the old saw of we're doing this to win this week, and then the quarterback that they choose isn't the youngster that they do need to see if he's got something yep. uh, on the ball before they, they choose, but they choose the guy who the entire city is at a front row seat to the most bizarre struggles a starting quarterback has had in the NFL over five years from, from high quality starts for the jets to having his jaw broken. So Geno Smith is the first guy they go to. It's just so remarkably tone deaf on so many levels. I can't understand it. I just can't start your weekend early Thursday night football. It'll be the Redskins taking on the Cowboys coverage begins at seven thirty Eastern on NFL network and NBC hope uh, home of uh, super bowl 52. Do you think, uh, I don't think Ben McAdoo's back next year, but do you think Eli Manning no. has? Do you think Eli's gone too? Yeah, I do. Uh, I mean, how do you how do you put it back together? Because if you're going for the for the Giants, here's the thing. I, you know, I, I don't know who they who they would hire, but you're going to have to try and hire somebody that that gets the fan base on board, right? So it's going to have to be a big name guy. Why would somebody come in and say? okay, my first two years of my job is going to figure out what, what blew up in Ben McAdoo's face is what to do with Elon Manning when he's done, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know who would take that job um, under those circumstances. So whoever's coming in has got to start completely fresh with whoever they will draft at the top of next year's draft or Davis Webb. And the interesting thing is they do have a five-game schedule that if you want to see what Davis Webb is made of, Every single NFC East opponent that they have is coming into their house over the last five games. Yeah. So yeah. you could see you could see what the future looks like with this kid. The problem is they don't have any running game and they don't have any wide receivers and they don't have any offensive line, which is kind of why Eli looks like a two and nine quarterback. Yeah, I wonder if someone like Josh McDaniels and maybe Scott Pioli, who's uh, Bill Parcells' uh, son-in-law, maybe, uh, huh. you know, you got you did. And I know nothing ab about this. I'm just throwing out maybe that possibility of Pioli working with the Patriots and Josh McDaniels, and maybe you have, you know, something like that, an infrastructure that, you know, you can trust. But I do think you have to start over. Who, If I'm coming into that job, I don't want a 37-year-old, soon-to-be 38-year-old Eli Manning. Right. Exactly. Uh, look, I'm not saying the Gi the Giants are still a highly attractive job in an organization, despite what we're seeing play out right now, and despite what we're seeing play out right now. Um, you know, Eli and the and the Giants are going to have a relationship for decades to come. Uh, you know, uh, no NFL divorce has been ugly was uglier than Favre and the Packers, and they're living happily ever after right now. So, no matter how bad it is, the Giants, I am. Uh, Let's put it this way: ninety-nine point nine percent certain are going to make it right in the long run. Yeah. But uh, right now, I do not see Eli Manning uh, starting for the Giants next year. Although he could start over the next five weeks, because the last time Geno Smith got this opportunity, because the quarterback in front of him uh, was benched, he blew out his knee within the first half, and Ryan Fitzpatrick was right back in there. So, and and that's the my other thing is Eli's the backup. Dan, they're gonna put an Dan, they're gonna put an earbud in his ear. They're gonna make him get on a plane to Oakland after running scout team practice and put an earbud in his ear. They should tell him go home to your wife and kids. Go home to your wife and kids. You're you're if you want to run, please be around the team. But we're not gonna make you stand there and be a backup. It's gonna be so I mean, if, humiliating. I, I mean, what in the world? Yeah. I honestly just cannot believe it that this is the way it's playing out. And that, again, a guy who everybody in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, all believe isn't going to be back next year, the one who's the face front. Now, I know John Mara did speak to the, the, the media yes, yesterday, but I, I, you know, this is just an awkward five-week period that I think the Giants just need to get through and hit a reset button. Who's on, uh, the, uh, who's on, on the show? On everything. 
Uh, well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm radio only today inside AT&T Stadium. Um, so Brad Sham's going to join me to voice the Cowboys, and Chris Cooley is part of the Redskins uh, broadcast, and, and off we go. Just talk football for three hours. We'll be watching tonight. <laughs> now, that's, that, that, that just sounds infused, Dan, with something no, other than, I, I, just, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm curiosity. Gonna, or, I, I watch on something. Sunday morning. I'm watching tonight. Uh, you're <laughs> you're going to be with Rodney and Tony, so, you know. Okay. I will be. Is there, is there anything I should say to them? No. Uh, I know you'll see them Sunday again. Or, okay. No, no. Uh-huh. I, I'm fine with them seeing another anchor behind my back. I'm okay with that. It, it's okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Don't worry, Dan. I'm okay. Don't worry, Dan. All right. Okay. Have fun. You got it. Thank you, Rich. That's Rich Eisen, right. NFL Network. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.